hey, guess what? Marvel shook things up real quick and brought in a bunch of mutants into the MCU. Now there's a whole gang of mutant characters making their mark in Marvel's world. Not too long ago, mutants were nowhere to be found in the MCU. But hold on tight, because Phase 4 and beyond have flipped the script with loads of exciting changes and the debut of some cool characters straight from Marvel Comics. Now, don't get too antsy for the X-Men to show up in person. Right now, all we've got are little hints that they're around, hanging out somewhere in the MCU timeline. Checking out the future projects lined up, it looks like it might be a hot minute before we see the full-fledged X-Men crew in action. But hey, mutants are officially part of Marvel's live-action universe, and you can bet they're only going to become a bigger deal. Miss Marvel was the first confirmed mutant in the mainline MCU, so in the comic books, Miss Marvel has had a double life as both a mutant and an inhuman. Now, it looks like the same might be happening in the MCU. The whole deal with Kamala's powers is a bit mysterious throughout most of the Miss Marvel series, but the season finale spills the beans and reveals there's some mutation action going on in her DNA. Sure, her quantum band gives her a boost, but it seems the core of her powers comes straight from her genetic code. The Marvels, the next big thing in the MCU, drops a subtle hint that Kamala might also be an inhuman. The catch is, since she hasn't been exposed to Terrigan gas, the stuff that usually triggers inhuman powers, it's a bit unclear if this is intentional or just a slip-up in the editing room. Keep those eagle eyes peeled. Namor is the MCU's oldest mutant. Yep, it's a fact that Miss Marvel is the first mutant in the MCU, but in the universe they've cooked up, she's not the pioneer in the mutant department. Enter Talakanil from Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Now, Talakanil and others in Wakanda might have their superhuman mojo thanks to vibranium exposure, but Namor takes the cake as a mutant powerhouse. Namor's got that mutant label, but he's not your typical X-Men hangout kind of guy. He's doing his own thing making him a cool addition to the franchise even before mutants become the norm. Good news for Namor fans, he makes it out of Wakanda Forever in one piece. The tricky part? No one spilled the beans on when or where he's making his next appearance. The suspense is real. Professor X canonizes X-Men in another reality. No doubt, one of the major surprises in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was seeing Patrick Stewart's Professor X make a grand entrance. Marvel's choice to have him as part of Earth 838's Illuminati squad kind of fast-tracked the X-Men into MCU territory, even if it's through the multiverse loophole. His gig in the movie doesn't exactly confirm the X-Men's existence on Earth 616, but it does show that his world, and the folks in it, are kicking it somewhere out there in the multiverse. Think of it like the deal with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Men. They have their own little corner of reality within the MCU's multiverse playground, at least for now. The X-Men from the Fox universe seem to be doing their own thing in this cosmic jigsaw puzzle. Mr. Immortal as an unconfirmed mutant She-Hulk brought in Mr. Immortal, a guy who has this nifty ability to bounce back to life right after taking a fatal hit. Now, the show didn't bother giving us the lowdown on where his powers came from, but luckily, the comics spilled the beans on what makes Mr. Immortal tick. Turns out, just like a bunch of other Marvel characters, his special skills come from the X-Gene. So it's a safe bet to assume that the MCU's Mr. Immortal is rocking that same genetic mutation. But here's the catch, the show hasn't outright said he's a mutant, and we might be left hanging unless he pops up again in She-Hulk Season 2 or some other MCU show. Beast may finally explain how the MCU gets its X-Men. The post credit scene in the Marvels left us all in shock when Monica Rambeau, stuck in some alternate reality, wakes up to find none other than the X-Men's Beast. Now, Beast looks a bit different than he did in the old Fox X-Men movies, leaving us wondering if this is a completely new version or just a snazzy visual upgrade since 2006. Either way, the idea that the X-Men might enter the MCU from a different multiverse timeline is gaining traction, shaking up the way we thought they'd make their grand entrance. As for She-Hulk, attorney at law, it dropped a major hint about Wolverine joining the MCU with a headline screaming, Man Fights with Metal Claws in Bar Brawl. Now, sure, technically it could be talking about someone else, 
But who else fits that description better than Wolverine, especially with his track record for barroom brawls? The latest scoop is that Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is set to make his MCU debut in Deadpool 3 alongside Ryan Reynolds' Merc with the Mouth. The big question now is whether Jackman's Wolverine is already hanging out in the MCU, like She-Hulk hinted, or if he'll be making his grand entrance through the multiverse shenanigans. Quicksilver was in WandaVision, uh, sort of. When it comes to the not-so-main X-Men characters, it's a bit of a mixed bag, or maybe sort of. Take siblings Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch, for example. In Marvel Comics, they kick-started their superhero journey as mutants rolling with the Avengers. Then, things took a turn when they were reimagined as individuals powered by the Infinity Stones, giving them a ticket into the MCU. WandaVision, the Scarlet Witch's own TV show, had fans on the edge of their seats, wondering if Marvel Studios would bring back the mutant angle for Wanda now that they had the X-Men back in their fold. The surprise entry of Evan Peters, who played Quicksilver in the 20th Century Fox X-Men movies as Wanda's speedy brother Pietro, you know, the one who bit the dust in Age of Ultron, just cranked up the speculation. But oh, the plot twist. The show's finale dropped the bomb that Peter's character was just a regular human who got caught up in some enchantment to look like Wanda's brother. So did the MCU toy with the idea of mutants? Absolutely. Did we get an actual mutant character out of it? Nope, not this time. Deadpool will be in the MCU. Marvel Studios has committed to extending the Deadpool franchise from 20th Century Fox, featuring Ryan Reynolds in the starring role. Notably, this installment will be integrated into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A fresh, R-rated Deadpool movie is presently in the works, and it will be directed by Sean Levy, known for Free Guy. Given the presence of various X-Men elements in the initial Deadpool films, such as the Xavier School and Mansion, as well as the introduction of Wolverine, it would be a significant deviation if none of these characters were to appear in the third installment. An X-Men movie is coming, sometime. In 2019, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige excitedly announced to an enthusiastic San Diego Comic-Con audience that the studio was actively working on an X-Men movie set within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, since that revelation, there has been no further information. Nonetheless, Feige has hinted that the MCU's interpretation of the X-Men will diverge significantly from 20th Century Fox's approach. As of now, fans eagerly await Marvel's official disclosure of how they plan to introduce some of the most beloved Marvel Comics characters into the expansive Marvel movie universe. Which other characters could be mutants in the MCU? Marvel possesses a range of other MCU characters who could potentially be mutants, and one such character has already made an appearance. During Jennifer Walters' visit to Abomination's ranch, she encountered El Aguila, a Zorro-inspired superhero from Marvel Comics. In the episode, El Aguila demonstrated the ability to emit bioelectric energy from his sword. While the series didn't delve into the origins of his powers, considering El Aguila's mutant status in the comics, it's plausible that the same explanation holds true in the MCU. This approach may extend to other MCU characters as well, as El Aguila, Mr. Immortal, and Namor the Submariner are soon to be accompanied by more Marvel Comics mutants. For instance, Shira Haas will portray Sabra, an Israeli superhero with enhanced strength and reflexes in Captain America New World Order. It appears that the gradual introduction of mutants will soon culminate, and mutants will fully integrate into the MCU, either concurrent with or preceding a proper X-Men reboot.